The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Trader's Edge with Steve Rhodes. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. The Trader's Edge. Now, Steve Rhodes. Good morning, folks. Welcome to the April 12th, the wonderful Wednesday edition of today's Trader's Edge show. I'm your host, Stevie Perseverance Rhodes, who absolutely knows that each of us should always be pioneers of our future versus prisoners of our past. Hope everyone out there is having a great day. And hey, let's make sure we have an extraordinary one. The easiest way to do that is to always remember that life is happening for us, not to us. That's right. When you and I make that one little two by four shift, it means we can find the gift in every set of circumstance that life is going to toss at us. Now, today, you and I are going to check on the circumstance of these markets. We'll go figure out what those bulls and bears, what those buyers and sellers are communicating to you and I at just past 11 o'clock in the morning. I do want you to know I'm absolutely grateful for your presence here, but even more important than that, and that's this. During the next 53 minutes, I'm here to serve you. So feel free to pick up that phone and dial on in at 877-927-6648. Now, if you've got a question but you can't dial in, you can always email that to me. Send that off to Steve at tfnn.com. And if you'd be kind enough to put radio show question inside that subject, then that would be great. And, of course, inside our Tiger's Den, we'll just like code, any ping will do, private or public. So let's go ahead and get this show started on wonderful Wednesday. Of course, this is Tiger. Financial News Network. I'm Steve Rhodes. Welcome to the show. We got U.S. indices with the exception of the New York Stock Exchange trading the downside. New York is up 30 points. The Dallas off 35. S&P down 10. NASDAQ off 75. Russell down 6. Semis off 38. Spot volatility is still below. It's 50-day exponential moving average. So you kind of chalk one up there for the bulls at the moment. Gold's up three bucks. Silver nine cents. Lights recruit is up a buck seven. Natural gas is off seven cents. And the 30 Treasury is basically flat at 132.12. Lead the charge dollar wise. The upside you got Triton International up 20 bucks or 31 percent. Chart Industries up about 10 bucks or eight and a half percent. Solar Edge up about two percent or five bucks. Mercado Libre down 25 two percent. Avis budget down 14 percent or seven bucks. 7%, I should say, 14 bucks. Cirrus Logic off $12 or 12%. 12 Charter Communications, 10 bucks, about 3%. So we've got some movers and we've got our shakers. But what we have right now is a question. And that question coming in from Brent to Martinez, California, it reads like this. Can you please look at the Russell 2000? That's why I'm reading you the question, because we're going to go switch over and take a look at the equity markets out here. We're going to begin doing that by taking a look at the Russell 2000. So we'll change over to our white background screens here. Let's finish reading the question. It goes like this on a, a shorter term time frame charts. Anything indicating a potential bottom, we have nice pullback from that 530 spike high. What do you have for volume on the spike compared to the bar at the 630 open? Thanks so much. Have a great day. Okay. So we're going to just do the overall analysis here. We'll begin with the longer term, really, which would be the daily time frame right now. Daily time frame, upper left-hand chart. You see that nice Rhodes momentum indicator bottom completes with that nice bottom uh, hammer candle or bullish hammer candle, I should say, at the bottom of its profile. We have good, good old-fashioned consolidation with inside the profile. The Russell's got support at 1722, but that oscillator and change line has really acted as support ever since. Uh, March the 27th. So we're going to call it about 1766 out there as support and resistance 1825. So that's the bigger picture, Brent. You want to keep that in mind. On a five hour time frame chart, price got right up to its TD nine count breakdown resistance area at 1820. And it did it with a TD nine count pattern. Now price is below its the oscillator and change line. Its level of support to be washing to the downside out here suggests 1786 to 1777. That's the area to watch. On a four-hour time frame chart, what do we have out here? We don't have much. What we do have is price consolidated with inside a bullish structured profile. So, Brent, the number on a four-hour time frame to watch, 1783.40. The two-hour time frame chart does have a confirmed Rhodes momentum indicator top. Price is trading below 1794. This current session here is going to close at uh, noon. So as we get off the air, the Russell 2000, Brent, if it's close, if it uh, is trading below 1794, odds favor it is headed lower. 
I know you're asking for support, but we're just kind of stepping through this. On a 60-minute time frame, price is below profiles. A 1766 could be a price target, 1788 for the 30-minute time frame. On a 15-minute basis, what we have out here is the area of support would be 1787.80, 1785.20, and 1782.50. Those are TD9 count breakout, uh, break, uh, breakout uh, support levels. And on a 10-minute basis, and perhaps this is the one that's most important to you, on a 10-minute basis, what price is doing as we speak, oh, what price did, it broke through a TD9 count bottom. So this didn't even have a hiccup. It formed the bar following bar number nine. It did that at 11. No, did that at 11? How can this be? 11, oh, it's 10-minute charts. Okay. It's DB, wake up. And at 1110, it negated that signal. Now, it does have support at 1787, but no bottoming pattern which I believe is what you were asking about. Now we just have some support levels out here. 1785.50, 1787.80 when it comes to the 10 minute chart. So the Russell 2000 is suggesting that it wants lower price and it may be really targeted at 1766 level out there. So that's the first thing, Brent. Of course, if you were on the phone, I would say, do you have any other questions or how can I unconfuse you about something I've said? Well, you're not on the phone, so I can't do that. But what I can share with you and really everybody else, what meaning should you take today with regard to the reversal what meaning should you take i know many right now are saying that's it it's game over well that's a possibility however let me give you something to think about now this is not the russell 2000 it's the s p 500 i've taken a good last 15 years worth of data this chart that we're taking a look at is how the s p has responded 10 days before that's 10 days before this red vertical line and 10 days after the U.S. Consumer Price Index data is provided to us. Turns out that the day of the Consumer Price Index, we see markets move lower into tomorrow. So what's going on right now, to a certain extent, is exactly the way the S&P 500 has behaved over the last 15 years. Now, let's take a look at the last 95 years. What do we have out here? Same kind of a uh, situation. What if we take the last five years? Same kind of situation out there. So what we are seeing unfold here, don't get too ahead of your skis out there, you know, because you could crash. You could end up being on an ABC wide world of sports. You know, they need to show that more often out there. And you don't want to you want to do that. So what the markets are doing, Brent, as we speak right now, we don't know if we'll lead to something else. We can you know, take a look at key levels of support and whether those areas get broken or not. But at this stage here, the market is actually behaving the way that it historically do, has done on average over the last 95 years out there. That's right, the agony of defeat, Dano. So uh, now if we go take a look at, let's go over to the uh, black background charts here. Let's take a look at those daily time frames out here. Brent, I'll assume you don't have any other questions. What else do we know? Well, when I take a look at the ES Mini, we had talked about, how it sell the D-point pattern, still in place out there. Only a close of about 41.73 would negate that pattern. But price also did test so far and reject the low of the swing point from February 2nd. So we've got a, uh, and I don't know what kind of volume, we'll have to check back at day's end on that. Um, but you do have the possibility, that, okay, you can't bust them out. We're trading with inside the ES Mini profile. Maybe price is going to get all the way back down to that 4076 level out there. But don't forget this. Over the last 95 years, the last 15 years, the last five years, when the CPA data is released, the market moves lower that day and then begins moving higher. Steve Rhodes with TFNN. We'll be right back. Currencies, commodities, and bond markets are as important as ever right now with how they're driving the volatility in equity markets across the globe, which is why it's a great time to try out Teddy Kegstat's Tiger Forex Report. Teddy Kegstat breaks down the Forex markets every Monday using his 30 plus years of experience as a trading veteran of futures, Forex, stocks, and options. Teddy releases his weekly Tiger Forex report every Monday morning with coverage of all the major currency pairs, including the dollar index, the euro dollar, pound dollar, dollar Swiss, dollar yen, as well as many more. And he also has weekly coverage of the crude oil market and the 30 year T-bonds as they both influence Forex markets tremendously. When you sign up for the Tiger Forex Report, you also gain instant access to Teddy's 60-minute webinar archive he just hosted, Forex Strategies and Fundamentals, What is Behind the Tiger Forex Report. For all the details and to start your 30-day Tiger Forex Report subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. 
TFNN, educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn. And he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, education investors call, call now toll free at 1-877-927-6648 internationally at 727-873-7618 Welcome back, folks. Let's get to some of our requests that have come in here. Well, one that uh, got away from us yesterday is uh, KBR. And uh, my apology, I don't recall who asked uh, for that. But KBR uh, closed above a, a TD9 count uh, top yesterday. It closed above its TD9 count breakdown resistance. This is suggesting higher price. There's an A to B equal CD pattern underway that would get us up to about the $60 area. You're bullish on the weekly. You're above profile. The green oscillator and change on. You're bully on the monthly time frame. Although price is running into resistance on a monthly basis, that resistance stands at uh, 56.94. You're at 56.69 right now. So close to about 56.94 on a monthly basis would be a very bullish outcome. Today, with regard to KBR, is going to be, it looks like, it'll be day number three of consecutive moves higher out there. We have seen this make a three bar, then a one day move, a four bar, then a two day move to the downside. So I would expect that you will see some type of retracement unfold either tomorrow or Friday out there. And it just may be a one-day move to the downside. If I take a quick peek at the 30-minute time frame chart right now, it's trying to set up a Rhodes Mintum indicator top. It's actually been confirmed. It did that at the 11 o'clock hour. So now what we can we need to see is, uh, well, 56.27 hold that support. That's the bottom of its profile. Price closed below that. You're likely headed back to the 53... 55.43 level out there. So that's what I see when I take a look at KBR. And thanks so much for your patience of waiting an extra day. The next request up is uh, from Coda inside the Tiger's Den. Uh, there's a few of them. The first one is the TLT. So if we take a look at the TLT out here, it is trading right now with inside its profile. So this is probably the most important piece of information, Coda, that I can provide to you. Its uh, support level is 104.13. Resistance level is 108.87. You're really in the midpoint here. You're trading just below its green oscillator and change line. If it closes today below 106.93, it suggests it lost its momentum, and that could be signaling a target of 104.13. The weekly time frame, you've got basically consolidation with inside its profile. The monthly time frame, it's the red oscillator and change line. It is your resistance level. The price can close above that, which is pretty much where we're trading right now. That could signal move to 112.04 out there. That's what I see when I take a look at the TLT. 
Now, on a 30-minute time frame, this is trying to confirm a Rhodes Mint indicator bottom. I say trying because we don't have that bullish reversal candle just yet. Resistance here on the TLT, 106.97. That's on a short-term time frame. That was a 30-minute. So, Code, I hope that helps you out with regard to the TLT. Your next request was to go and take a look at KWEB, KWEB out there. I believe that is the China a web service, uh, if I'm not mistaken, or ETF that is out there. So KWEB, it is trading right now at about 2880. I say about, I need to check to see if I've got this uh, time delay. It's really a data delay, but uh, nonetheless, I would like to give you accurate information. Come <laughs> KWAB, see where it's trading at, about 2887. So, uh, you know, we're, we're pretty close right now. What it's doing is trading below profile, and it's trading into a swing point or trying to trade into a swing point low from March the 15th. Now, it hasn't gotten there. The top of that swing point, CODA, You've probably already identified this. 2840. Now, the volume on that swing is 22 million shares. Today, you've done about 10 in a, less than two hours of trading. So this has got volume as it's pushing towards that swing point. I would say KWEB is going to target that level, 2840. If it closes inside there with volume, meaning more than 22 million, then it's likely going to get down to 2769. That's certainly supported by the weekly chart, which is trading below its red oscillator and change line. So that suggests lower price. And the monthly just got a consolidation with inside its profiles out there. So not much more to add. Um, this will be KWEB. This will be day number three to the downside of consecutive moves. It typically does three, two, three, and four bar moves to the downside. So KWEB should form some type of short-term bottom today or tomorrow, I would say. But otherwise, it does look like it wants to really target that swing low. The next request out here is to take a look at uh, FXI. I believe that is the uh, uh, that is one of the uh, China. Um, is it the China 25 large cap uh, stocks out there? Well, we take a look at FXI. It shows on my screen, trading about 2860. We're at 2853 on the white background screens. Uh, closing today below 2883. We'll be closing below the bottom of its daily profile. That likely triggers an A to B equal CD to the downside. Now, the B point has 34 million shares. You've done 15 million already. So it looks like you're going to get a confirmed A to B equal CD to the downside. It's not a gigantic one. There's your A to B. I'll just move this over to the C point as soon as I can grab it. There we go. So it does look like what price is really doing is gunning for 27.76. That is its uh, TD9 count breakout level. A bullish reversal candle once it gets towards 88, 28.20, 28.19, somewhere right around there. A bullish reversal candle would then confirm a Gartley buy pattern. But right now you've got a con what appears to be a confirmed A to B equals CD to the downside. So I do hope that helps you out. And lastly, what Coda was looking for was some advice on silver. So if we go take a look at the intraday charts as well as the daily, the daily shows a TD9 count top out here. And that would be negated today with a close above that high, which is 25.29. We're at 25.37. So watch 25.29. Now, there's also a possibility that it could negate one top and create another. We can see a Rhodes indicator signal has been triggered. At the moment, it's a bearish shooting star candle. The candle 1124 is not the candle we're interested in. It stays in candle. So you got a TD9 count top that's under attack. There's the potential that you get a Rhodes Mintum indicator signal if, in fact, that gets taken out. And if you don't get a bearish reversal candle and price close above that, that tells us about a strong momentum move for silver to the upside. As we take a look at the five-hour time frame chart, TD9 count top, 2491 would be support. TD9 count on the four-hour. Rhodes Mintum indicator top on the uh, two-hour. Rhodes Mintum indicator top on the 60. Nothing on the 30. Probably a sell the D point pattern. The same for the 15 and the 10 out there. Uh, I would be watching to the downside. Looks like the key area of support right now, 2518. A close below that is going to suggest lower price down to 15 minute basis. That lower suggest would be 2509, but breaking support would not be a very good thing out there. Price right now is testing resistance. So, Coda, that was K Web, that was FXI, that was Silver, and it might have been a couple of other things out there. I hope that provided you with the information that you're looking for. If not, Please go ahead and write back to me. Um, I didn't get a chance to see the response. If there was, yes, that was from. Uh, so Tarpon, inside our Tigers Den, wants to take a look at Bud, B-U-D, Budweiser out there. Let's go ahead and populate it on these charts. And uh, so that'll take just a moment. Budweiser right now trading out at um, 64.22. 
My system says 6387, the screens that you're looking at. Now, this could be generated in A to B equals CD to the downside. So it closed today, Tarpon, below the price point of 6403. Could trigger or would trigger an A to B equal CD downside. Now, the volume there was 3.8 million. You're at 2.6 already. So you've got to watch that. Now, this chart here shows it doesn't have the accurate price. But let's take a look. So you got a TD9 count top that may turn into an A to B equal CD to the downside. So here's our A to B point. I will go ahead. I'll just copy and paste this one. Why? I don't know. I'm just going to do that. I'm going to try to do that. I always like to do what I say I'm going to do. There we go. So now we're going to copy and paste, and that would get us down towards the 63 level. Uh, but you'd be waiting for a bullish reversal candidate to confirm a bottom. The other price target could be 61.13, 62.72 on the weekly. So 61.13 is the daily. 62.72 is the uh, weekly chart. Watch that swing low. If you get it close below that, you likely have a confirmed A to B equals CD to downside. And that number is 64.03. Steve Rhodes with TFNN. We'll be right back, folks. Of course, I'd love to hear from you. More questions, please. Be right back. If you want to take advantage of this sector, now is the time to subscribe to my Gold Report. The Gold Report is a comprehensive look at the metal sector as well as the markets that move gold, which is the currency and bond markets. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to lose. Every Monday morning, I publish the Gold Report with coverage of gold, silver, bonds, the XAU, HUI, GDX, as well as more than 30 different mining equities. To see for yourself the types of profitable trades that are recommended within the Gold Report, sign up now by visiting TFNN.com. Don't miss out on the next great gold trade. Sign up today. TFNN has just launched their new trading room, The Tiger's Den. Hosted at Discord, TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. And now they are expanding their reach with The Tiger's Den. Available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. In The Tiger's Den, you can look over the shoulders of Tom O'Brien and the other TFNN hosts while they analyze charts during their live Tiger TV programs and join an interactive trading community with hundreds of members exchanging ideas. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day, even at night and on the weekends. The Tigers Den and Discord is accessible on mobile or tablets as well, so it's always at your reach. To sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders, just visit the front page of TFM. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern for free. Each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. Uh, TFN breaking news. We've got some TFN breaking news. What is that breaking news, Steve? -O? Well, let's go take a look at the market breath for the S&P 500. Those are the speed dials in your upper right-hand side. You'll see that each of those are in the green zone. What does that mean? That means market conditions for the S&P 500 for its weekly, its daily, its four-hour, and its one-hour time frame is bullish. It is market breadth bullish. Let's go make sure of that here. We've got right now 315 instruments on a 60-minute time frame trading above profile, 75 below. 
Be careful out there to the short side. Be very careful. This is breaking news. If we take a look at the uh, four-hour time frame chart, we've got 308 above, 61 below. Let's go to the next level up, the daily time frame, 248 above, 48 below. And finally, let's go take a look at that weekly time frame. We've got 139 above, 86 below. The S&P 500 is saying... I'm bullish. This is nothing more than the traditional CPI index one day knee jerk reaction. At least that's the message as we speak right now. But how about the NASDAQ 100, Steve O? What's the NASDAQ 100 off about four tenths percent, 48 points? What is it doing from a market press standpoint? Turns out this is Doble Gee breaking news. Bullish for its weekly, its daily. It's 240 in a 60 minute time frame. Let's go take a look at what those statistics tell us. 52 above, 30 below for the one hour chart. For our time frame, we've got 44 above, 17 below. That's very bullish out there. Daily time frame, 41 above, 13 below. And finally, on the weekly level, we've got 35 above and 9 below. Those are very bullish TAS market breadth market conditions out there. The question is, do we see any kind of a bottom signal? And here's the NQ out there. And the only one that I see that sticks out at me, now this is the four-hour time frame chart. And the current bar doesn't complete until 2 p.m. And even though bar number 8 likely is going to complete, and that can be the identifier of a TD9 count bottom, that uh, following bar is not going to complete until the end of the session out there, until this evening. And so therefore, now price has made its way back to 13.005. That's a TD9 count breakout area. That level's been tested uh, several different times. It has held. Maybe it will hold this time as well. So you got a TD9 count bottom to consider at day's end. This is really lining up with regard to that seasonal or that event cycle. It's not a seasonal cycle. It's an event cycle that we just took a look at with regard to the CPI data. Now, that's the four-hour time frame chart. What else do we have out here? What we don't have is a bottom signal per se. Let me take a look at this 15-minute chart out there. And I don't, I don't want to force anything. Now, there's no A to B equals CD pattern. That's for sure. It looks like this, folks. This is what my eyes were taking a look at. I wanted to see if maybe we had a buy the D point. But clearly, that's not the case when I expanded this out. We can see we're – so I don't have a bottom pattern for a, an intraday time frame chart, whether it's a buy the D point, some type of, type of TD9 count. Erosement to indicator signal, I got not a zip. So the only thing that I've really got out here is the bottom of the two-hour profile of 12,987 and that breakout level that we took a look at on the 240-minute chart. But, uh, folks, um, now this would also be on the NQ. Let's say uh, inside the NQ, this could be day number two of consecutive pullbacks. And that's typically where we would see the market uh, at least bounce from there, if not bottom. So something to consider. Let's go take a look at the ES Mini. So we have the ES Mini data. We've got the... Uh, and Q data. Let's go see if there's any kind of signals here, knowing uh, that we've got, uh, knowing that we've got the uh, positive market breadth uh, for the S and P and for the uh, Nasdaq 100. So let's get back here. Let's get the ES mini pop. And of course, we already know there's a top out there. Um, and that was the uh, sell the D point, and that was tested as well as the top of the profile today. But real key level of support on a pullback out is going to be that green oscillator and change line. 4105 is the uh, current print right now. Rosemont indicator top on the five hour price just uh, finding support at the top of its profile. That's bullish. That makes a lot of sense with regard to what we just saw out there in the 240 minute chart. 240 minute chart, it's got a Rosemont indicator top out here. Price finding support at the center of its bearish structured four hour price profile counter trend moves would typically find support there and so far the yes mini has if we take a look at its intraday charts i'm not seeing any kind of bottoming pattern out here again that 15 minute chart i don't believe that's got the a to b equals cd well let's go measure it just in case i uh, you know visually i can easily be off here so let's go a to b let's just move that over now nah, there's no way it's got to be the same thing as what we looked at inside the nq oh i say it does but stevie was wrong wrong again no, you've got a confirmed, at least 15 minute, by the D point pattern. Now, what that should do, folks, is that should take price up to its oscillator and change line. It changed colors. If price tests and rejects that, tests it, closes back below it, stays below that red oscillator and change line, then that market breadth that we just took a look at is going to get chipped away. Whereas if price closes back above it, then you've got a battle, at least at this moment in time, 
up at the 4152, 4160, and then 4173 level. That's courtesy of the 15 minute time frame chart for the ES mini, which does have a confirmed bottom pattern, which should take price up to that oscillator and change line. Again, printing around the 4141 area out there. So that's what I see when I take a look at the ES Mini and the NQ. Again, that was a TFNN breaking news alert out there. Let's go to our next request. This is coming in from Nicholas, and Nicholas wants to take a look at Tesla. So let's get Tesla out here. Give me a second, T-S-L-A. And let's actually get to uh, Nicholas's, whoops, Nicholas's question, which reads like this. Could uh, Would you go over Tesla? Thank you, and have a great hump day. Well, thank you, Nicholas. And good morning to you as well. So we take a look at Tesla out here. Tesla has a new profile that formed. So let's take a look at that. The new profile uh, for has got support at 179.28 and resistance at 188.78. So that's what I see when we take a look at the daily time frame chart here for Tesla. What else do we see? I don't see anything much else. Anything much else. Sign me up to teach uh, English. On a weekly time frame chart, good old-fashioned consolidation with inside that profile, price testing support right now, the bottom of the profile, price consolidating inside the monthly time frame. So I think you've got just basically a good old-fashioned consolidation going on inside of uh, Tesla out here. And not much else to report on that I can see. So, Nicholas, I do hope that that helps you out. Thanks so much for the request. There was a request inside the Tiger's Den to take a look at the um, – what do you want me to take a look at? Shoot. Where did that question go? Thank you. Thank you. Uh, XLF. KRE. Okay. Okay. Oh, okay. Combination. At the XLF, the KRE, short the KRE. Let's, let's take a look at the KRE. So let's look at the regional banking index out here. And the KRE, let me get to my other screen, see what it's actually trading at. Let me make sure we're all set up right. KRE is trading out at uh, 4261, right below the bottom of its daily profile. So an area to watch out here is going to be 4287. If you get it closed below that, it would signal to us that price may want to get down and test that oscillator and change line and likely test the swing point low from March the 24th. That's a candle had 47 million shares. So far, you're only at 7.3. So you're trading into the swing point with light volume. But if you do close below 43.67, you can easily get down and test 41.28 out there. So that's the first thing. But you do have a valid bottom. Precious has been really trading sideways out here. No bottom pattern on the weekly. No bottom pattern on the monthly. The monthly says over time what price would like to do is get back to its breakout area. That's at 34.17 out there. But uh, what I'd be watching right now, is uh, 4287 close below that odds favor around 4070 odds favor a test of 4128 that's that low from the uh, candle session of march the 24th out there so i do hope that helps you out uh, lastly since i hear the alarm going off in my ears is you've got a rosemont indicator top on the uh, 30 minute chart and price likely targeting 4190 steve rhodes with tfnn be right back might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. 
Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything, from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. Are China A shares hot or not? If you trade China A shares, now may be time to take a closer look. Trade CHAU or CHAD, Directions Daily CSI 300 China A share bull and bear ETFs. China A shares in either direction. Visit directioninvestments.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Welcome back, uh, folks. Uh, so you got a mixed bag out there right now. Dow's up 30. NASDAQ 100 is off uh, about 37. The S&P is flat. The Russell's down four. The semis are off 32. Gold's up three bucks. Silver 16. Lights we crude up a buck nine. Natural gas up 10 cents. We'll take a look at that uh, this morning. 30-year Treasury is basically flat at 132.13. Uh, We're taking a look at the XLF. This is for Dano as well. So we take a look at the XLF versus the uh, regional banking. If the XLF can close the day above... Let me see, 32, 34, where did it close yesterday? 32, 34, right on it. So yesterday you had the volume, but it didn't close above the swing point. 53 million shares were taken on 45 million shares. So far today you're at about, well, you're up, got volume, 21 million shares. If the XLF closes above 32, 34, you're gonna have a confirmed A to B equals C to the upside. That'll take us up towards that 34, 29 area. So different look here in the XLF versus the regional banking. On a weekly time frame, I don't have a bottom pattern and price is trading inside its swing point still. It would need a rejection of that swing point. That would require a close above 32.19 at week's end. You're at 32.30. On the monthly time frame chart, price is just consolidating with inside its profile where it has support at 31.50. So with regard to the XLF, watch that swing point high. Price is, look, price is above the top of its, um, no, it's back inside its profile. It's above the bottom of its profile, but it is attempting, and it's got volume on the move higher. Uh, it is attempting to form an A to B equal C to the upside. The one to one on that, should it do that? And it hasn't yet, but do you want to, you most certainly want to watch. This would turn out to be more than a one to one A to B equal C D. Now, Stevie says that, but how can, can he guarantee it? And the answer is no. Can't guarantee it. What I can share with you is that retracement is a 0.382 or less. And that says that this would, should you close above that swing point from April 4th, you would likely get more than a 1 to 1, A to B equals C to the upside. Again, this gives us that price target around 34.29 out there. So that's what I see when I take a look at the XLF. Dan, I hope that helped you out with both the KRE and the XLF. Best of luck to you there. Greg writes, and he wants to take a look at uh, U.S. Bank Corp. USB is the ticker symbol. So let's get to Greg's question. And Greg, thanks for taking the time to write in. Would you take a look at USB? It had a TD9 count, which was broken to the downside, and now it has come back to that level. It is also forming a flag at the bottom. You've been watching. You've been watching to take a long position. What levels would you look at? Thanks, Greg. 
So when I take a look at USB, you just have a consolidation right now with inside its uh, profiles. So your support level is 3489, resistance 3652. Therefore, if you want to start a, uh, a position here, why don't you do it at about 3489? You got down to as low this morning as 3497. So you don't have to use 3489, you know, right to the T. Uh, but that's what I would be looking at. This does have a Rosemont indicator bottom. And that form when price gapped up on the trading session of March the 21st. So a little bit of a consolidation. No bottom pattern here on the weekly time frame. You do have price that is trading with inside its profiles. So you've got 3489 as profile support on the daily, Greg. You have 3443 as profile support on the weekly. You have TD9 count breakout support at 3417 on the monthly time frame chart. So use those numbers as your parameters. Should you go ahead and take a long position here, um, what you really want to see is some kind of sign of strength coming off of this uh, bottom. So you could have a lot of accumulation that goes on for quite some time out there. Um, and no, we've, we've not seen any kind of sign of strength off of the bottom. So I hope that helps you out. Thank you so much for taking the time to write in. You mentioned the TD9 count pattern. And that TD9 count pattern lasted for about a day. This, uh, well, I take that back. Yeah, it lasted for, for one day. That pattern got negated. So it formed on uh, March 13th that completed the next day. And then um, uh, the following day on March the 15th, price closed below that. Uh, but it did go on to go. It did go on to form a. You know, there's a there. There are a to b equals c d to the downside patterns. But we don't need to draw that in on this daily time frame. We've got a roach momentum indicator signal price consolidating with inside his profile. So that's where we'll leave it with regard to USB. And Greg, thanks so much for taking the time to write in. Our man in the Tiger's Den, that is G-Man, he watches in and wants to take a look at Meta System. So I believe you're in a long position out here. So we take a look at Meta or Facebook. What we have out here is both a TD9 count and Rhodes Mintum Indicator top. So you've got two topping patterns, but price is way above profiles. Let me check on my other system, which would show a new profile if one is attempting to form. And we do not have that. Wow. So we take a look at Meta. You've got tops in place out there. But what you also have, G-Man, is sideways movement. So in other words, sellers have not bought in to the fact this has got two different topping patterns. If they got in, if they bought into that, well, then what you should see Meta do is make his way back to 197.90. Other than it's really, that's 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 the area of support out here for a daily time frame. If we take a look at the weekly, looks like an A to B equals C to the upside. Let's see if there's volume confirmation here. The B point, which says bar, which says C on my screen because that's part of the Chapman way. But the B point is February third, the week of February third. Three hundred forty million shares traded hand. So as price closed out, you had one forty, you had one oh four. You've got eighty four from last week. So here's one of those A to B equals C D patterns. Not confirmed by volume, but most certainly confirmed by price. And that works, too. And this is a gigantic A to B equals CD to the upside. Well, I take a look at the weekly time frame chart. Let's try to draw this in here. Well, we are going to draw it in. It's just a matter of i got to scrunch the chart in order to be able to put this in there. So we're already up past the 280 mark. And this is obviously much less than a 0.3 or much less than a 0.618 retracement. That says around 277 on a weekly basis over time is where uh, Facebook or Meta likely wants to head to. When you look at the monthly time frame chart, price is above the top of the monthly profile, 197.06. So you had a weekly TD9 count roads momentum indicator bottom. You've got a daily TD9 count top roads momentum indicator top. But we've seen that price hasn't bought into it. It must be the weekly and the monthly charts that are telling you why it hasn't bought into it. Um, if I take a look at a 30-minute time frame chart out here, not if, we are going to, what do we have? Not much. TD9 count top, it's led to basically a sideways move between about 210 up to about the 217 level out there. So Facebook, G-Man, it looks pretty good. I know you, I believe you were long, uh, and I would stay long, cautiously long, uh, simply because of that daily pattern out there. But Facebook looks like a good long-term position out there, Dano. So congrats to you on that, and... Uh, Oh, that wasn't Daniel. That was G-Man. That was uh, take a look at uh, Meta. So uh, congrats to you on uh, that. Congrats to everybody. Now, Mike, uh, inside our Tiger's Den, my take based on what Steve and Larry have been teaching me, MES, next stop is 4143. MES, that's defining time. Well, MES, let's go take a look at uh, what um, 
uh, our charts say out here and see if we can figure anything out on MES. Was it MES? I mean, that's what I've got up on our screen here. It's trying to populate. Just an instrument I'm not familiar with. Not that I'm familiar with all of them, but yeah, that's not working. So you probably didn't mean MES out there. Maybe you meant the ES. That would make sense, the ES. But I'm uncertain about that. Do we have another question? Well, let's do this here. Um, let's uh, I'll wait to see if defining time tells me that it is the ES that he's looking at. But I see the 4140, so it must be out there. So let's go take a look at, uh, let's take a look at natural gas. We can come, well, let's, let's wait for a break to show up. Yeah, just the ES. Okay, no problem. Ah, the micro ES. Here, we take a look at natural gas right now. You've got that nice Roachman indicator bottom out there. Price struggling at the center of that uh, profile out there. I don't know if natural gas is ever going to form a bottom. It's under a lot of pressure. Tons of pressure out there. Steve Rhodes with TFNN. We'll be right back. If you're looking for potential trading setups in the stock market, then Rocket Equities and Options Report is a newsletter you should try. Tommy O'Brien delivers options and equity trades when the markets present them using a combination of fundamentals and technicals. Sign up for Rocket Equities and Options Report today with a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything, from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com, educating investors. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, uh, folks. So right now I've got the uh, a larger time frame charts up here. You're seeing lights we crude and natural gas. It's really a natural gas chart on the bottom that I wanted to share with you. I was really being facetious with regard to natural gas and its bottom. And we do really want to pay attention to this. And I believe the reason is, if you look all the way over on your left-hand side, now that's a continuous contract, you can see that this is bar number nine of a TD9 count on an annual basis. So what that's telling me is um, once we do find a solid bottom, we, this could be a very long-term move to the upside out there when it comes to natural gas. Now, we don't have any kind of a bottom signal on the uh, monthly time frame. You can see on the weekly, 
it has a Rosemont indicator pattern that has been triggered out there. And you could get a, you could easily get a bullish reversal candle this week. You could, of course, uh, and that's what we would want to see to give us another sense that this has bottom. You've got the Rosemont indicator bottom on the daily. If we can get one of those on the weekly, and you got that TD9 count on the yearly, it certainly would suggest take another stab at this. But a bigger picture that I wanted to share with you was that yearly TD9 count bottom pattern that is out there. Uh, last uh, comment really uh, coming in from the uh, by email from Hector and Hector was taking a look at gold was paying attention to the daily candle and the daily candle for gold does have the potential to generate has the potential to generate a uh, bearish shooting star candle out there. What it would need to do Hector and Patty it's got too much of a wick right now in order for this to be a shooting star candle. So what price would really need to do is probably close at about the 20, 15, 2016 mark, 2016, 2015, 70, not do a whole lot more other than just close lower. Now, if that were to happen, what Hector's really pointing out is that would then confirm a Rogeman to indicator top when it comes to the daily time frame chart for Goldilocks. Of course, we would need to see it get below the top of its profile at 2015.90 to suggest that this is something other than a neutral signal. So you're right, uh, Hector and Patty, there's the potential for a uh, Rosemont indicator top to be confirmed today. That's if we get a bearish reversal candle on a daily time frame chart. And it's uncertain as to whether a bearish shooting star candle will form or not. Hey folks, great to be with you. Have a wonderful Wednesday. I'll look forward to seeing you on Terrific Thursday. Take care, folks.